hi everybody welcome to my channel make sure that you are subscribed by pressing the subscribe button like his auntie also make sure go to you join as a member if you can afford to it's right here below the join button so listen you guys i want to do two stories on this video because both the stories it's more of an update on what's happening with the stories that we've done on previous sundays because when it's a sunday we do make sure that we gossip honey okay and then we go to church and pray for the forgiveness listen you guys so when it comes to the story of the former president's daughter on the 21 year old that is said to be getting prepared to marry in kosia maswad the 58 year old i don't know you guys last week on the sunday world they referred to him as a 58 year old but this week they're saying 56 so there's a confusion there with his age but we can say for sure that he must be in his 50s because they are not missing that okay remember the sunday world had told us about the lobola negotiation day that had happened but uh, the former president had walked out of it because he wasn't impressed with the fact that the king is the one that wants his daughter okay he was like as a friend you should have called me okay and given me a few millions on the side before you come and pay the millions over here so it was said on that article that he had walked out of the negotiations he was like listen i'm not doing this if you guys want to continue you can but i'm not going to be part of it okay now in this week's article on the same sunday world publication they are talking about this story and they are giving a, a clarification to say that Nomtsebo is already Eswazini, which is the story that I did during the week, uh, that the source was Swaziland News, where they were saying Nomtsebo is already over there attending events and being prepared or presented as the king's official girlfriend and being prepared to become a wife. But in addition to that, during the um, session or the event where they were supposed to pay Ilobola during Umtsebo, her mother, Umam Shongo, was there, okay? And they are saying Umam Shongo is the one that is actually uh, supporting the whole process of her daughter marrying the king. In fact, after uh, Ubabu Zuma or the former president walked out of the negotiations, she was the one that told the people that were there to do the negotiations to move ahead. They were like, listen, this is happening whether he likes it or not okay so please continue to do the negotiations people are saying okay that will be the source of the sunday world is saying is being motivated by the amount of money that the king is promising to pay for because apparently they are paying two million rents in cash and the hundred cows which are worth six digits each cow okay so if we make these cows the cheapest we can say each cow is a hundred thousand and if you say a hundred thousand times a hundred you know it becomes a lot of zeros now if you add the two million over that you can see that that is a lot of money so now even though the former president walked out of the negotiations umam Shongo stayed or instructed the people that were there to continue without Ubaba Kamakoti. Okay. I know there were people that said in my comment section last week that, listen, guys, this story is not making sense because when Indo Tagazi is being loboload, the father is normally not there. Okay. And I was like, you know what? Maybe it's in Tosanzuang and Lelenga Fan in different places because I know for us, the father would be there, but obviously he's not there all the time negotiating. He will have his brothers or whatever negotiating, but he will have to give a go ahead to say, yes, Uguti no Uguti can happen. First, allowing them to come in, you know, and paying that lobola. And also, he'll be the one that says, yes, I want this much and this much and this much for this and this and that, okay? Even though he's not the one that is actually doing the negotiations. But I will say, you guys, that, of course, things are done differently 
in different places. As you go to Ngafani, Abantu Wenza Ngafani, even within, within KZN, even uh, within Amazulu. Okay, Ngumzulu, but Ngagiti is into Zenziwa this way, but somewhere else things might be done differently. So that's why I feel like it is valid for people to say, listen, the father is not normally there anyway when uh, the Lobola is being paid because maybe in some places that is the case. But that is what the Sunday world is saying, you guys. So now they are also confirming the same thing that Nomto is over there in Swaziland getting prepared to become the 16th wife, apparently. Uh, all of the process that is being done to prepare for that, the, uh, the 15th wife is the one that is most supportive to the king in preparation of him marrying Unomteb, okay? I don't know how young she is. Maybe she's like, listen, maybe Angzwani na lapoma kotabatala and there's a new one coming. Let me support Ubaba to take another one. Maybe I can have a friend in this one. <laughs> I don't know what this is. So I didn't see uh, seven seconds on you guys, but that is what is happening. I was surprised. I was like the mother. I'm thinking that the mother will, will be the one that will be like, there's no way that I am allowing my daughter to marry such an old man under these circumstances. But apparently she's the one that does not have an issue with it. It could be you guys that, I mean, she had already spoken to her daughter because mothers and daughters speak and maybe she knows that her daughter uh, wants this. She is okay with this, you guys. I wish that we could hear from her mom because I'm really wondering, like, for, are you for real, like, wanting to marry the king, you know? And why do you love him? You know, or is it just for the lifestyle? You know, that kind of a situation. I just want to find out because what's happening uh, there. But that that is the update that I wanted to give you guys. It's the two million and the hundred cows worth six figures each. Okay, it's a lot of lobola here. Anyway, you guys, I want to also talk about Amanda Dupont and uh, the Jup Jup case because just like last week, they did write an article where they are explaining in detail how Kelly Kumalo actually ended up losing that case. Well, it's a loss because, of course, the, the charges were withdrawn. They, here, they're talking more specifically about Amanda Dupont, you guys. They're saying this is how they were able to get those charges withdrawn. They do say that in the allegations or accusations that amanda had made she had said that uh chuk chuk had art hair uh up to three times i think but the thing that she had said was that some of those times her sisters were there okay and she also uh, mentions that at some point after the R, she will share a bed with Jup Jup and her sister. And the people were saying, listen, how is it possible that after a guy R, you, you were comfortable sharing a bed with him and your sister? It does not make sense because, guys, listen, sometimes we might not be able to protect ourselves. But when we see that our siblings might possibly go through the same thing that we've gone through, hmm, we don't let it happen under normal circumstances. So I can see the point that they are trying to make here. But they are saying that the, but the thing that really, really, really helped them was the fact that years and years ago, Amanda Dupont had done an interview with Move Magazine where she had spoken about how she had been violated previously. Okay, so when the journalist that had done an interview with her put two and two together when she's telling a story because she's telling a story of how she was violated by she did not want to give a name of the person that had violated her. So the journalist is the, uh, asked the question, is it Jup Jup that violated you? Because, of course, the journalist maybe knew that they were in a relationship. She says, no, the person that violated me is not Jup Jup. Okay, because the journalist... Uh, kind of believe that it might have been Jup Jup, he was going to write that story of her being violated. And Amanda Dupont ended up threatening the journalist and saying, listen, I told you I was violated and I told you that it is not Jup Jup. If you go ahead and write an article that says that I was violated by Jup Jup, I will sue you. That is how much she was willing at the time to defend Jup Jup. She was like, it is not Jup Jup. I will not tell you who it is, but it is not Jup Jup. But if you go ahead and write it in your newspaper or in your magazine, I will 
sue you. So now they're saying, listen, if back then you were willing to sue people for this statement over here, how now did it change and become Juju? Because you were the one that said that you did not want people to say it was Juju because it was somebody else that had done the deed. Okay, so with that, you guys, because of course the journalist from uh, Move is still there, and he says, "Listen, that is what he." She said, "She said yes, she was violated, but it wasn't Chup Chup. In fact, she did not want me to write about it and threatened me with her lawyers." Okay, so those are some of the things that helped Chup Chup's uh, team to actually end up having the charges withdrawn against that. Well, against Chup Chup, you know. You know what I mean, you guys. Also, what they mentioned with Amanda Dupont is that she says that after one hour had taken place, she had gone to one police station to try and report the case. Okay. And she says that she got there and there was a female police officer that had refused to help her to open the case, which is not unheard of in South Africa. We've heard of those stories where victims say that they will go to the police station and they are not helped. Sometimes they do get the help, but it's not a very um, friendly kind of help. Okay. And uh, they say uh, this is unlikely because most of the time when people who are celebrities or who are popular and known go to police station, they usually get better service. You know, and also if she went to one police station and she didn't get assistance, she could have gone to another. But there's no record of her ever going to one station, uh, police station that she's talking about. But there's also not a record of her ever trying to go to another police station. So they say the same thing that they said with Kelly Kumalo to say that the fact that she had waited until uh, the podcast for her to go and report it, it does feel like or look like it was more of revenge. It wasn't a thing of her wanting justice. They even go on to say there are possibilities that the, the relationship between her and Jup Jup was a relationship that she never revealed to her husband. So when Jup Jup went on the podcast and said what he said about her and her husband didn't know about it, her reaction was, let me just say that he did this to me and it wasn't something that we had agreed upon okay anyway listen Joop Joop is free until the next one honey because this is what happens with these cases sometimes okay i guess if he never did it we are never going to hear anything more about Joop Joop ever violating a woman like that but if there's other women out there that have been violated trust and believe this is not the end of it okay ask r kelly okay ask him <laughs> he thought he was free forever and it didn't work anyway you guys thank you so much for watching this video tell me what you think about this in the comment section in the most respectful way because guys it is a sunday okay also like the video before pumagyo and i share it with your friends with your family and even with strangers in the